We are ready to knock out another interview. They're taking bets on how long I could keep my energy up and, and grind through these interviews, but I tell them, man, I go all day. Boom, there you go. Kamar, the Nigerian nightmare, Usman fighting this Saturday, March 2nd against Tyrone Woodley. You guys already had a little uh, fireworks at the presser. Yeah. You guys had some words. How was that? This is the fight he didn't want. He didn't want he this didn't fight. He didn't want this fight. Let's, let's be honest. I fight inside the cage. I, if, you, if you watch my fights, like, how often do you see him kick? Or have you ever seen him throwing a head kick? It's going to be, I'm going to back up, back up, back up. If you, you make me scared, I'm going to throw this haymaker at you. You know, like, that's what he's banking on. So I have way more into the arsenal. And, and one thing, you, you never see me get tired. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. respect, brother. Best man, of luck to you, family. Appreciate it. Appreciate right. it. Usman. Yes. Brother, when you win this title, I'm going to smash you. <laughs> OK. OK. I'm no. When I, Habib, Habib. When I win, when I win this title, don't look me in the eyes. You look down. You look down when you see me. <laughs> nah, is it dangerous in there at night? He's safe. Is He's it? He's safe. Yeah. You can actually, you can even drive to the park at 3 a.m. in the morning. Really? You will see people jogging and running and bicycles and so on and so on. So oh on. shit. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It never stops. Never. There it is. Look at that. <laughs> this is go. sweet. Let's walk up these stairs, huh? Signal of freedom, huh? No water. It's insane. Small town, Nebraska. It's in New York City. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever seen the Statue of Liberty, man. That's it's wild. It's iconic, you know. Some Statue of Liberty for the win. <laughs> Woo! New York, New York. As far as finding a weakness, when you look at Woodley, did you see any holes there? Because the last time somebody was really able to work him over was Nate Marquardt like a fucking decade ago. I, I know he's tough. I know he's good everywhere. But I'm going in there to test his heart. We've seen his heart tested it, and we've seen him break. So I'm going in, I'm going to push those buttons. And right now, I don't think anybody does that better than I do. I believe in a division right now. I'm a fucking problem when it comes to mixing it all, getting you to think about this while doing this, Th think about that while doing that. I think I do that better than anybody. I'm gonna push those buttons and we're gonna see who breaks first. Oh, it's fucking Lionheart! Yeah. Give me some Lionheart! <laughs> Is Matt Sarah a fan of Lionheart? Can oh, you not tell? I'm a big fan. I mean, Let's not play favorites. <laughs> I'm just excited. This is, this literally is, a, this is an, a, an underdog table right here. This should uh, yeah. be no pressure. I mean, really, you Zero. should be whistling Zero. to the cage. Yeah, no one, no one expects shit from me. Uh, I'm just John Jones's next victim, you know, to to the majority of the world. But uh, I was just telling the people earlier, like I feel like a criminal, like I'm, I like I know something that no one else knows, and That's I'm gonna great. I'm gonna roll in and and steal some shit from Vegas and then leave. Do you think that John is underestimating you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, think about this: how many times have you guys heard me say that I'm taking John Jones seriously? I don't have to say it, right? You know, uh, so on four or five different occasions, he's had to say it over and over and over again without being asked. No one's asking John if he's taking me seriously at all. Uh, I don't know why, I don't know if he's trying to convince me or convince himself, but uh, I just don't I, don't, I don't think that his arrogance and his confidence will let him see a valid threat. How long have you guys been training together? 17 or 18. Long time. At Missouri, yeah. Yeah. because you guys are two years apart, right? Yeah. We well, have much of a choice, you know. we. It was either we could just run away and try to pick easy partners to train and wrestle with, but we decided to wrestle each other every day because I feel like we, you know, sharpened each other. Let me take you back to 2008. 
he's in Beijing, yeah, yeah. the Olympics. What did you think? You now, wrestling NCAA and winning the NCAA title, yeah, that's great. And that's the goal. But when you make it to mm -hmm. the Olympic Games, that's better than winning the NCAA title. When you are one of a million that can make it to the Olympics, like finally one of us cracked too. So he was carrying a, you know, the banner for us. You know, I think one of the most interesting things about you, Ben, is that you come over here in an unprecedented manner. What was your involvement? No, almost none. Really? They called me one day, uh, not the UFC, uh, Chatri from the other organization, and from one, and he called, he said, hey, what, what if we traded you? You can do that? You know, I was like, uh, yeah, whatever. You know, I'm good, trade me. And then he called me two weeks later, and he goes, hey, you're traded. I said, come on, stop, bull stop bullshitting. And he said, no, you're traded. And then I couldn't sleep till like two o'clock in the morning because I was so excited. So yeah, I, that, that blew my mind. I didn't know what could happen. All right, thanks guys, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Tyrone, um, you've had a few exchanges with uh, Usman and you know, now he's saying that you're not focusing on those five, too many other things going around. What's your reaction when you hear I love it. Five Cause you're gonna get his ass whooped on Saturday thinking that. He says a lot of stuff and sometimes when people talk too much, they're trying to reassure themselves. Hey, you haven't heard me talk about Usman. I just wanted Usman to tell me how he's going to beat me. Because as I laid out before, Dung Young Kim was a judo master that can also strike. Thompson was knocking every Robert Whitaker fell victim to. A lot of guys did. And I don't have to talk a lot because I've done it already. I've done it, and I'm not going to stop doing it. And um, he just has not shown me that he provides the recipe or, 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 or the, the cure to beating me that everybody else supposedly had. Their sumo squats, eight reps, okay? Here we go. Nice and slow. Ready? Down, pull your hips down to the ground, chest up, head up. Now we're going to that column drop. So go down. My final strength and conditioning uh, for this camp. My weight's low. Uh, I have absolutely no injuries. Cardio's great. These guys have been pushing me to the limit for a while now, and they allow me to win fights in the championship rounds. And I'm really grateful for the, for the program that I'm a part of. There you go. Anthony Smith's saying, you know, he's a better fighter, but I'm a better martial artist. That makes absolutely zero sense. The one thing I know about myself is if you if you back me into a corner, you're gonna you're gonna force me to bite you. Good. Put that on it. Breathe and relax. Get the heart rate down. Just because I'm more technical doesn't mean that I can't fight you at a faster pace. He's reaching. He's reaching. Right, well, watch out, Coach. Pinch you got danger it. zone. And go. Use the hips. Pull yourself down. I expect him to say smarter things than opponents in the past, but I read through the bullshit. Feel that uh, altitude right away up here. The east is here. This place gives me a lot of strength. Right now we're here on the San Diego Mountains. There's something real special about Albuquerque Desert. The animals that survive here in Albuquerque, just like the people, are just adorable. You know, used to making something out of nothing. Look, look, look at these deer. Bro, I didn't realize how close deer were allowed to get. I would imagine he's the alpha. He's the only one with horns on his head. This is it right here, man. The beautiful Burke. This place has produced a lot of great champions. You know, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of expectation. You know, with me, not only people expect me to win, but they expect me to, to win impressively. And so um, I'm setting out to be the greatest fighter in martial arts history, and um, I'm the guy to do it. I'm not lucky to be in this position. I've earned being in this position. This is the lane that I was born for, the fast lane. The hard fights, that's what I was born for, and I believe it. But nothing else in life I'm supposed to be doing, but what I'm getting ready to do on March 2nd, and still. <laughs>